Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today we're looking at CPU performance in Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. Now, about six months ago, we did put together a mini test that compared GPU performance using the game's various visual quality presets and found that the best value combo for those targeting 60 FPS at 1080p was the Ryzen 5 1400 and GTX 1060. Since then, the game seen countless updates, a number of them have addressed the game's poor optimization issues or at least they've claimed to. That said, in its current state, the game still requires a lot of work. Things have been improved, but I'd say overall only a little bit since we first tested it all those months ago. Roughly four months ago, though, it did receive a patch which improved CPU utilization, claiming that the game can now utilize six or more cores. Over the past few months, I've benchmarked with the game a bit, but I haven't done any in-depth testing where I compare a large number of CPUs. It's mostly been head-to-head -head type stuff. So I thought, why not take all the 8th generation Intel Core series CPUs, all the Ryzen CPUs, and a few 7th gen Core CPUs and test them in PUBG under the same conditions. This is exactly what I've ended up doing, and now we have results for 16 different CPUs at 1080p using the very low, medium, and ultra quality presets with a GeForce GTX 1080i, which has the 388.43 driver installed. All unlocked Intel CPUs, along with all the Ryzen CPUs, have been tested using DDR4-3200CL14 memory. Meanwhile, the locked Intel CPUs were tested with DDR4-2400CL14 memory. So, for example, the Core i3-8350K was tested with 3200 memory, but the Core i3-8100 was tested using 2400 memory. Towards the end of the video, I've also noted the CPU utilization of all 16 CPUs, for those of you interested, and there are some interesting results to be seen there. For testing, I'll walk through one of the busy towns for 30 seconds, as this is more than enough time to gather the data we need. I actually reduced the pass time from the normal 60 seconds to just 30 seconds to try and minimize the frequency at which I was killed before completing the pass, as this is a high loot area. So high risk, but high reward, and yeah, high risk for those benchmarking. As you would expect, the test starts at exactly the same point and ends at the same point every single time, and I take an average of three runs. So let's check out the results. First up, we have the very low quality results. Here, the visual quality settings are set to their lowest value, so this should remove the GeForce GTX 1080i as the performance limiting component. That said, we are clearly seeing a GPU bottleneck here uh, with the majority of the 7th gen and 8th gen core processors. The GTX 1080i looks to be good for only about 120 FPS on average with dips to about 100 FPS. Previously, when testing with the ultra quality preset, I found the 7700K and R5 1600, for example, delivered the same performance. Here we see, though, that the 7700K is 20% faster than the 1600X, as the Ryzen CPUs appear to be struggling in comparison. Of course, with well over 60 FPS at all times, the Ryzen CPUs did still provide very playable performance, but in a game that claims support for high core count CPUs, the results are disappointing. On that note, I will discuss CPU utilization shortly. Quite shockingly, the Ryzen 7 1800X was just 14% faster than the Ryzen 3 1200 for the average frame rate, and just 6% faster than the 1300X. So this suggests that the game really isn't utilizing higher core count CPUs very well at all, and instead prefers core frequency over core count. Based on these results, it appears as though a quad core really is enough, and it doesn't even necessarily require HT or SMT support. That said though, for optimal performance, a dual core with HT enabled isn't enough, and we see this with the Pentium G4560, which really was considerably slower than any other CPU tested. That said, it was still able to provide playable performance and would be a great pairing for a low-end $100 US graphics card. Increasing the visual quality settings with the medium quality preset reduces the GTX 1080 Ti's performance by around 10% with the faster CPUs tested. There is a little bit of reshuffling with the Ryzen CPUs, and now those with more cores are seen to be doing a little bit better, at least when compared to what we saw previously. The 1800X is now 25% faster than the 1200, and 16% faster than the 1300X. So the medium quality settings do appear to place a bit more load on the CPU, though I have to say this wasn't apparent when monitoring CPU utilization, as the overall figures were much the same. Again, we see that the Intel CPUs are able to find the limits of the GeForce GTX 1080 Ti, so it's likely that the 8 and 12 threader models could go faster again. Finally, we have the ultra quality preset results, and here we see very little change from the medium quality results. For the most part, just a few frames are dropped, though, 
It's the Intel quad cores that are the biggest losers here. The 1% low result for the Core i3-8100 and 8350K dropped by around 15%, whereas the Ryzen 5 1500X and Ryzen 3 1300X, for example, were just 8% slower. Has to be said that so far the results seem to be a bit all over the place, and that's something we do often see with poorly optimised games. This graph gives us a better look at what's going on, though doesn't really clear anything up. Looking at the Core i7 8700K, we see a 10% drop from the very low to medium quality presets, and then a 3% drop from medium to ultra. The Core i5 7600K, on the other hand, drops 10% from the very low to medium preset, and then a further 12% from medium to ultra. So that's interesting. The ultra quality preset certainly hurts the quad core more, but then we have the Ryzen 3 1200 results, which are more in line with what we saw from the 8700K. So that's confusing to say the least. Then the 1600X shows fairly consistent scaling across the three quality presets. Then we have the Pentium G4560, and that's different again, showing similar results with the very low and medium presets, and then dropping quite a bit when using the ultra preset. So overall, we see that the Core i5 7600K and Ryzen 5 1600 are the only CPUs to show consistent scaling. Okay, so last up we have the CPU utilization results and they are very interesting. Firstly, what you're looking at here is the average CPU utilization recorded from our 30 second pass. So it's not the peak, but rather the average. The G4560, for example, did at times hit 100%, but it also dropped down to around 80%. And for the entire test, we did see an average utilization figure of 91%. What's interesting to note here though is how heavily underutilized the Ryzen 5 and Ryzen 7 series CPUs are. The Ryzen 5 1600X, for example, has four cores and eight threads, and it's clocked at up to 3.7 gigahertz, depending on the workload. Yet the Core i7 8700K, which also packs six cores with 12 threads and a minimum operating frequency of 3.7 gigahertz, actually saw higher utilization, quite a bit higher in fact. AMD's own six core 12 thread Ryzen 5 1600 saw an average utilization figure of just 28%, which is considerably lower than the 45% figure seen when testing with the 8700K. You would expect a lower clock CPU, the same core and thread count, to see higher utilization, not drastically lower. So there is clearly a serious optimization issue here for Ryzen CPUs. Six months on and Player Unknown's Battlegrounds still requires serious optimization work. Shoddy Ryzen support aside, even the Core i7 8700K and GTX 1080 Ti combo were very underwhelming, pushing just 123 FPS on average at 1080p using the minimum quality preset. Well, for lack of a better word, that's pretty pathetic. Helping to put that result into context, the same combo pushes over 220 FPS in Battlefield 1 using the medium quality preset. We see 200 FPS in Warhammer 2, 240 FPS in F1 2017, 260 FPS in Rainbow Six Siege, 220 FPS in Call of Duty World War 2, and well, the list just goes on. Again, with all those games, we're nowhere near the minimum quality settings either. All quoted frame rates are based on the medium quality preset. In anticipation that some will argue that PUBG is an open world shooter and therefore hammers the CPU, well, as we saw when testing with the very low quality settings, this simply isn't the case. An Intel quad core or greater will hit a GPU bottleneck at just 120 FPS, while the Ryzen CPUs were heavily underutilized and didn't have a chance to get anywhere near that figure. One thing seems clear, if you're a massive PUBG fan and you're building a new computer to solely play this title, something like the Core i3-8100 or 8350K for example, will offer you the most bang for your buck. I'd never normally recommend the 8350K, but PUBG makes it somewhat of a valid choice. Although I am yet to test any older CPUs, based on the results that we have seen here, I would quite confidently say that anything back to a Core i5-2500K will play the game just fine, providing a mild overclock is applied. Uh, it's pretty shocking to find though on the GPU front, at least with a high-end GPU, that there is very little difference between the very low and ultra quality settings in terms of FPS performance. Visually though, there is a massive difference. So again, that's quite shocking. Anyway, that's gonna do it for this one. Let me know what you think below. As always, I'm keen to hear your thoughts. I'm your host, Steve. See you next time.